Hi there, and welcome to another ESG Explained video, where we try to deconstruct and demystify ESG for everyone. You've probably heard of the terms carbon neutral and net zero when it comes to the greenhouse gas reducing ambitions of companies. But have you ever wondered what carbon neutral and net zero actually mean, and what the difference is between them? Let's start with carbon neutral. A carbon neutral activity means that the carbon that is produced by that activity is offset or theoretically cancelled out by an equivalent amount being removed, something called carbon offsetting. Now this carbon offsetting can be done in a few ways. First, carbon currently in the atmosphere can be removed. This is called carbon sequestration and could be done by, for example, planting more trees, or what's called reforestation. The second way of carbon offsetting is preventing future carbon emissions by supporting projects which will have that effect, such as investing in renewable or green energy. Finally, what is known as a carbon credit or a carbon offset can be purchased. What are carbon credits and carbon offsets? Well, we'll go into these in a bit more detail in a future explainer video. For now, briefly, carbon credits arise where a company is permitted to release a certain amount of carbon under a cap and trade scheme that operates in certain jurisdictions, but they release less than this amount. This credit of under usage of a permitted carbon allowance can be bought and sold between market participants. Carbon offsets represent operations that reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere. So these carbon credits and carbon offsets can be bought and sold in some markets. So another way to achieve carbon neutrality is for a company to simply buy carbon credits or offsets to compensate for the carbon the activity produces. Some important things to note on carbon neutrality. It doesn't mean that the activity doesn't produce CO2. And indeed, it doesn't even mean that the amount of CO2 being produced will reduce in future. It could increase. It simply means that whatever amount of carbon is produced by that activity is balanced out by carbon sequestration, investing in carbon reducing activities, or simply by the purchase of carbon credits and offsets. So fossil fuel companies, for example, which claim they will achieve carbon neutrality have come under pressure because their plans don't involve reducing the amount of CO2 that their activities produce. They're simply planning on buying more carbon credits or offsets. So let's move on to the term net zero and what that means. Net zero means that a company has reduced its absolute emissions across its whole supply chain to the full extent possible. Note this key difference with carbon neutral, which doesn't in itself imply a reduction in carbon emissions, simply that it's balanced out by carbon offsetting activity. So net zero is considered the gold standard for corporate climate action and is widely accepted as being needed across the economy in order to support the target to limit global temperature increases to 1.5 degrees Celsius as agreed at the 2015 Paris Climate Summit, also called the Paris Agreement. Carbon credits and offsets can be considered under net zero, but only after all methods to avoid and reduce greenhouse gas emissions have been exhausted, for example, via current technological limitations. So while net zero is considered the gold standard for corporate climate action, both net zero and carbon neutral strategies have their place in the current climate change agenda. There really isn't one globally accepted standard definition of each term, but with some basic understanding of what is commonly understood of them, the potential for confusion and misinterpretation of company greenhouse gas emissions targets can be reduced. I really hope this video has been helpful in providing a basic deconstruction and demystification of the terms carbon neutral and net zero. And in future videos, we'll be looking a little deeper into other ESG topics. If you'd like to see those, please like and subscribe to ESG Explained. 
and include a comment below if there are any specific ESG topics you'd like us to cover as we look to deconstruct and demystify ESG for everyone.